Good morning. Yesterday we spent some time working with complex numbers and writing them in polar form. When we did this, we used this formula. Z is our complex number. We were able to change it to polar form where R is our modulus, theta was our argument, and wrote it in this form. Well, sometimes we're going to have to take a complex number and raise it to a power. Let's say that we want to take our complex number z. What if we want to square that? What happens on the right-hand side if you square this? With the modulus is r, that would just be r squared. The argument inside is theta, and what we need to do is multiply it by itself. Well, that just means that we would have cosine 2 theta, because we'd have two of those. Over here, we have i sine, and we'd have two of those. What happens if we have to the third power? We want to cube our complex number. We take our modulus. We're going to cube it. We have three thetas inside that we would be adding together. So that would just tell us to add three theta plus i sine three theta. Now it's not going to take a rocket science to be able to figure out what's the general formula if we want to raise it to the nth power. And you can see that all we're going to do is we're going to take our r raised to the nth power. We will then multiply by cosine. We're going to take n times theta. We'll have our i times sine in theta. And this is a very famous formula. French mathematician de Mauvray's theorem. He's the one that came up with this. It's one that we are going to be using today. Let's be able to use a few examples of what we want to be able to use off of this. So let's do another uh, example here. Now I have de Mauvray's theorem written up here at the very top. Our problem is given here as already written in polar form, but we want to be able to raise this to the fourth power. So we have this complex number raised to the fourth power. Let's apply de Mauvray's theorem. So the three out in front, we would need to raise that to the fourth power. We're going to multiply that cosine. We have to take the argument 5 pi over 6, multiply that by the 4. So 4 times 5 pi over 6 plus i sine, and we have to multiply this, 4 times 5 pi over 6. Now, let's simplify that a little bit. 3 to the 4th power is 81. We have cosine. 4 times 5 is 20 pi over 6. I sine 20 pi over 6. Now, simplifying this, let's reduce our fractions inside. We have 81. This is cosine 10 pi over 3. I sine 10 pi over 3. We need to find a coterminal angle for 10 pi over 3. That is the same thing as 3 and 1 third pi. So if you look about drawing a finding where 1, 2, 3, and a third pi, what is the coterminal angle that that would be? And you could see that it would be the same as 4 thirds pi. So therefore, what we need to do is always simplify 
we want to make sure that this angle in here, the argument, is between 0 and 2 pi. So we have to find coterminal angles. So we'll write this using 4 pi over 3. This would be changed. This is where we have expanded this to the fourth power and simplified it, left it in polar form. Okay, now let's try another example. As you can see, we have a complex number raised to the fourth power. So we're going to have to do what we did yesterday. First thing we need to do is let's change this complex number into polar form. So we can do this like what we did yesterday. Let's plot this point. So we know that positive radical 3, negative, would put the point someplace down in the fourth quadrant. We can draw our reference triangle. We have radical 3. We have negative 3 here. This is our theta. And what we would need to do is let's find our modulus. So r squared is equal to square root of 3 squared plus negative 3 squared. So r squared is equal to 3 plus 9. So r squared is equal to 12. So r is the square root of 12. We can simplify that. We can do that later. We also need to know how big is that angle. So we have opposite and adjacent. So we know from Sokotoa, opposite and adjacent uses tangent. So therefore, we're going to have the opposite is negative 3. Adjacent is radical 3. Got to rationalize, so let's multiply by the radical 3. That gives us negative 3 radical 3 over 3. Those will cancel. So we are actually left with tangent is equal to negative radical 3. Now look at your unit circle. In the fourth quadrant, what angle is that? That would be 5 pi over 3. So to be able to write this, we would say that we have square root of 12, cosine 5 pi over 3, plus i sine 5 pi over 3. That would be in polar coordinates. What we want to do is let's raise this to the fourth power. Now we're ready to apply de Mauve's theorem to be able to expand this. Let me switch over to a different page now. Now applying de Mauve's theorem, we have to take our modulus, square root of 12, We're going to raise that to the fourth power. Then our cosine. Remember inside we multiply our exponent 4 times our argument 5 pi over 3 plus i sine 4 times 5 pi over 3. Simplify. Square root of 12 times square root of 12, got that four times, that's going to be equal to 144. Cosine, four times five is 20 pi over three. I sine 20 pi over three. So we have expanded this. 20 pi over three, that is not between zero and two pi. So find a coterminal angle. When you find a coterminal angle, you first of all, you could change that to 6 and 2 thirds pi. Think about where is that? So 6 and 2 thirds pi, what is that angle? And you could see that that would just be 2 thirds pi. So we can rewrite this as 144 
cosine two thirds pi plus I sine two thirds pi. Now, at this point, our problem asks us to write this in rectangular form. So what that means is we need to simplify what's inside the parentheses. So let's go back to your unit circle. You have 144. What is cosine of 2 pi over 3? When you look up the cosine of 2 pi over 3, that's negative 1 half. We have I. What is sine of 2 pi over 3? When you look that up, you get square root of 3 over 2. Now let's distribute. We can distribute, gives us negative 144 over 2 plus 144 square root of 3 over 2 I. Simplify, that gives us negative 72 plus 72 radical 3 I. This is changed back into rectangular form. I know there's a lot of steps to this. Watch this video a few times and then practice your assignment on Delta Math. Let me know if you have problems.